everyone, I'm Hannah and this is my schoolmate Nadia. We are part of the Holy Childhood Kids. We help kids all over the world. It's all part of life at school. Study, play, pray, have fun, learn. About theater arts and video editing and growing stuff to eat. And planning for our futures and for the future of the whole world. That's where Holy Childhood comes in. Through Holy Childhood, kids all across Canada are helping to make the world a better place. So come with us on an adventure around the world. We will explore the lives of children who are in some ways just like us, and in other ways they live lives that are really, really different. Together, we are the Holy Childhood Kids. Together, we can make the world a better place. The journey to India from Canada is long, two days including stopovers and changing planes. We fly over the Atlantic, parts of Europe, and on to India. From the plane, you can see India's amazing central position in Asia. It is almost surrounded by water. The Indian Ocean to the south, the Arabian Sea to the southwest, and the Bay of Bengal on the southeast. India is on the border with Pakistan to the west. China, Nepal, and Bhutan to the northeast, Burma and Bangladesh to the east, and Sri Lanka to the south. As soon as you get off the plane, you see a country and a people very different from Canada. It is hot and crowded and very noisy. People wear colorful clothes. Everywhere you see kids working in the streets. These are kids with real challenges the quality of their water, the shortage of food, the diseases they and their parents can get, the shortage of schools and books. India is a huge country, the seventh largest landmass in the world, while Canada is the second largest after Russia. But India has more than one billion people compared to 30 million Canadians. In India, there are more than 17 million Catholics almost double the amount of Canadian Catholics. Catholics are a minority in India, and so are the Muslims. The majority of Indians are Hindu. And there are a huge number of poor people, even though India has made a lot of progress in the last few decades. The average yearly income of a worker in India is $3,700, compared to $40,300 in Canada. Half of India's women cannot read. Their education and their financial progress because of it has been a cornerstone for the missionaries. We are organizing the women into their own self-help groups. The women are formed into a group and they study their situation, they go to the government and they get loans and they make their living and they have a beautiful family spirit coming up. One-third of India's population are under the age of 14. That amounts to about 400 million children. 114 million children in India are in school, compared to 20 million in 1950. But millions still do not have that opportunity. Safe drinking water is a huge issue, and many children do not even have bathrooms. Of India's 700,000 rural schools, only one in six have bathrooms. Half of the children in India are underweight, and 46% of children under the age of three suffer from malnutrition. Malaria, hepatitis, and HIV AIDS are all huge problems in India. The Catholic Church has focused on the very young amongst the country's poor, no matter what their faith. Only education can change the society. And we also have seen by this, respect in the society has increased because we help poor, whether it's Hindus or Muslims or Catholics. There is also campaigns, campaign against illiteracy, campaign against uh, child labor, because in certain pockets of my diocese, this is still there. Children are taken for cheap labor, 
so especially in places where they are making this bricks so therefore our activists go there they re- they remove these children from such works they put them in the school and pay compensation for if it has to be done The Church of India began with the arrival of the Apostle Thomas in the 1st century AD and later became the focus of missionaries from Europe over several centuries. Today, almost all of the sisters, priests and bishops are from India. So many people have vocations there. I promised God that after becoming a doctor, I will come and serve you. Instead of earning money and all that, I can give my whole self to the poor people. <laughs> Whatever we need, the sisters give it. They educate us, they feed us well. When we are sick, they take us to the hospital. When I grow up, finish my studies and get a job, I would also like to help poor people. Holy childhood really makes a difference for some of the kids. As stay-at-home missionaries, we kids can send the missionaries of India our prayers and donations. We have 18 projects going, helping out more than 3,000 kids. We help maintain three boarding schools for girls and one for boys. We donate to an orphanage. We help out with clothing, school supplies and health care. We help street kids with their food, shelter and education. And if we take the time to learn more and really understand what is needed, we can do more. We can save lives and make lives a lot better. It all begins with getting to know India's kids a little better. So join us on this great learning adventure. Do a class project based on this video on India. Write the Canadian Holy Childhood Association to get more background. Raise some money. Holy Childhood will let you know how the money is spent. Above all, keep these kids in India in your prayers. For sure they will be praying for you. Together, all of the Holy Childhood Kids of the World are forming a huge circle of love. It's where you belong.